European Union seeks to transport Azerbaijani gas via Russian pipelines through Ukraine. The European Union is exploring the possibility of transporting Azerbaijani gas through Russian pipelines that cross Ukrainian territory, according to sources cited by Bloomberg. The move comes as part of the EU's efforts to diversify its energy sources and reduce dependence on Russian gas. It is noted that European officials are negotiating to maintain gas supplies through the key Russia-Ukraine pipeline in 2025. Europe has tried to move away from Russian gas, but several Eastern European states continue to receive it through a pipeline that crosses Ukraine. The agreement covering this transit arrangement expires at the end of this year. However, representatives of the European Union and European companies are negotiating with colleagues from Ukraine on how to ensure gas supplies next year. But Oleksiy Chernyshov, the CEO of Ukraine's Navtogaz, has ruled out his country's participation in any EU projects that involve dealings with Russia's Gazprom. According to some interlocutors, one option that has been discussed is for European companies to buy and pump gas from Azerbaijan into Russian pipelines leading to Europe. Such an agreement would allow Europe to avoid difficulties associated with buying Russian gas at a time when it is trying to limit Moscow's revenues, the agency's sources noted. Slovakia is one of the key countries that could benefit from such a deal and Prime Minister Robert Fico spoke about the possibility last month after a trip to Azerbaijan without revealing details. Ukraine is reportedly open to the idea of purchasing gas from Azerbaijan and intends to continue utilizing its domestic infrastructure. The EU sees maintaining transit through Ukraine as a crucial factor in supporting the country's economy. Additionally, European officials are concerned that idle pipelines could deteriorate or become military targets, Bloomberg says. Russia may arm Houthis with high-precision missiles threat to US and Europe in Red Sea increases. Russia could transfer long-range missiles to several of its allies, according to a new map produced by Russian state media, after NATO countries donated long-range missiles to Kyiv and authorized some Ukrainian strikes within Russian territory, according to Newsweek. Moscow could start supplying the same high-precision long-range missiles, except they'll be of better quality since they're Russian, to those nations that are ready to strike our enemies, Russian state media host Olga Skabayeva said in remarks translated by the Russian Media Monitor project run by journalist Julia Davis. Late last month, President Joe Biden greenlit Ukrainian strikes on Russian soil with some US donated weapons to help Kiev fend off Moscow's weeks-long offensive in the northeastern Kharkiv region. Several leading NATO nations, including France and Germany, had signaled their permission for Ukraine to use weapons they provide to strike some targets inside Russia. Russia had vocally condemned the move, calling it an escalation of the conflict. Highlighting several countries on a map, Skabayeva suggested Moscow could send missiles to Houthi rebels in Yemen and weapons to several other nations. We are thinking about where our missiles could go, into which friendly jurisdictions, said state media host Evgeny Popov. Earlier this month, Russian President Vladimir Putin said the Kremlin would consider sending Russian-made weapons to other countries in retaliation for the Western nation's move. If they consider it possible to deliver such weapons to the combat zone to launch strikes on our territory and create problems for us, why don't we have the right to supply weapons of the same type to some regions of the world where they can be used to launch strikes on sensitive facilities of the countries that do it to Russia? Putin said during the country's annual St. Petersburg International Economic Forum. Now let the US and its allies feel the direct impact of the use of Russian weapons by third parties. Former Russian president and current deputy chairman of Russia's Security Council Dmitry Medvedev then said. This could be anyone who considers Yankee land as their enemy regardless of their political beliefs or international recognition. He added. Putin's ally suggested expanding the target of Russian weapons to shores of Atlantic Ocean. Russia's buffer zone in Ukraine effectively extends to the whole of Europe due to the range that Western weapons provides Kyiv's forces, Kremlin propagandist Vladimir Solovyov has said. 
In March, Putin called for a new sanitary zone within Ukraine to help protect against long-range strikes by Kyiv and cross-border raids, Newsweek recalls. He said such a buffer area would be quite difficult to penetrate with foreign weapons. Solovyov, who has close ties to Putin, raised this topic on his evening program on the Russia One channel, where he frequently describes the war started by Putin as a proxy conflict between NATO and Moscow and calls for missile strikes on the West. One guest, Rodion Miroshnik, a Russian foreign ministry ambassador at large, asked, why is there a question about a sanitary zone, given that the 20-mile distance between the combat zone and the border city of Belgorod could be breached by Ukrainian artillery and multi-launched rocket systems? But Solovyov said that the real sanitary zone is the Atlantic, with the arrival of F-16 fighter jets and missiles that can travel 1,000 kilometers. Washington gave the go-ahead for other countries to supply the US-made aircraft, which are expected to arrive on the front line this summer. Kyiv is awaiting the delivery of a $61 billion military aid package passed by US Congress in April. These dirt bags will not calm down until Russian soldiers are making porridge to feed the liberated citizens of Berlin, Paris and Lisbon, he said in comments in a clip shared on X by journalist and Russia watcher Julia Davis. Solovyov said that he was in favor of very harsh methods in the war, suggesting that a Russian flag would be planted in the rubble after the country's destruction, after which we will build everything from scratch. Solovyov also spoke of the need for Nazi dirt bags to be eradicated, referring to one of Putin's justifications for his full-scale invasion being to denazify Ukraine, which has been roundly rejected by Kiev and the international community. Solovyov then used dehumanizing rhetoric in describing the fight against Ukraine by asking, have you ever tried getting rid of bedbugs? Next to the video clip, Davis posted on X, meanwhile in Russia, Vladimir Solovyov insisted that Russia's sanitary zone should stretch all the way to the Atlantic. He compared Ukrainians to bedbugs that have to be eradicated in order for Ukraine to be cleansed, the Post added.